Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to part two of this session of Play the People. We actually had some technical difficulties, and we're coming back to do this again. Um, and it's really sad, Tony. Everybody missed it. I just beat Magnus Carlsen. You know, we played on a private server, so you can't find the game anywhere. But, uh, but yeah, for real, I, I absolutely won. Gained those five rating points that bumped us over 2,000. We're over 2,000 now, so <laughs> thumbs up, thumbs up. All right, so we're going to play some more. Uh, how about... Uh, this person here. Who do we got? Yamato. Yamato. My 1868. All right, we're at 2001, and we need to stay above 2000, so you can only lose one point. I'm not even going to lose one point. Come awesome. on. Love it. Awesome. What, what did he play? Did he play the English? Or no, this is a D4. This is called the Banco Gambit now at this point. Um, it's known to not be so great for black, but when I play it, it's really not good for black. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, you heard it, Yamato. Let's see what you got. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Hikaru uh, Nakamura has a game that went like this from a U.S. championship one time. And I think it has a different name, too, at this point. Like, after you've played E6 and they take on E6 and you take back with the F-pawn, it's called, uh, I don't know, maybe one of our listeners out there knows what it's called. But Who knows? Oh, we only have nine people watching right now. Thank you, nine people. All nine of you. We need to, yeah, we need you guys to basically start this, start this over again. Yeah. All right. Um, so. Like approaching 100, no. Yeah. Well, oh, we have 11 people now. Well, those of you who are joining us, thank you for coming back. Um, we had some issues. Uh, we have it, hopefully, we have it resolved permanently, but with technology nowadays, it's probably not. You know, with a new uh, Terminator movie c coming out, that might. Terminator is the reason our stream went down? You, you never know, man. Arnold like, Schwarzenegger? Sky, Actually, who's Skynet, Skynet Net <laughs> might, might, might be up and running, you know. Is it Arnold Schwarzenegger still? Is he? he he's in the movie, yeah. um, but he's like super oh. old. So like, how are you going to play that? But, <laughs> right. like, no. It's true. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, you going to take it? No. You going to take it? I don't think so. I thought, I thought you were going to take it and bring your nut another knight, the other knight out. No, i got to worry about this e6 pawn, because he's going to play like a knight to g5. If his queen's on e4, he's hitting the pawn. So I think I'm going to just do typical Banco stuff and put everything on the queen side. Although, at this point, I'm not sure I should do typical Banco, because I'm not really familiar with these lines where I've got an open f file. Maybe I should be attacking on the king side, but we'll just play some chess and see what happens. Right, mm. Yamato? I mean, I, I really thought you opened up the f file just to have that rook there. But I did. Yeah. All right, viewers, let us know in the chat of what your Lee Chess name is, and we will play you, put you on a list and play you, hopefully. Um, we should have enough time to play some more people. 17, all right, viewership keeps going up. I love it. Love it. So, T. Rich, let me, let me ask you this. Dan Danny was talking to you about, about this uh, before the show started, and I want to see what your view on this is. Um, mm -hmm. Genetic engineering. Ooh, you know how it's uh, getting deep. Yeah, yeah. You know how nowadays, um, how like China has successfully genetically engineered some 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 kids. Yeah, for yeah. sure. If you let okay, so let's say it's been FDA approved, like uh, blah, blah blah, gone through all the tests, and it's safe, a hundred. Well, Ooh. let's say like ninety nine percent safe. Is that something you you would do? Well, okay, so a few things. First of all, I think it would depend upon what you're trying to genetically modify in a, in a kid or something. Um, you know, if it is to prevent disease or illness or, or something like that, sure, I could see a good argument for it. If it's more like, you know, the designer babies and making sure that you've got a kid that has the right hair color or something like that, eh, you know, not, not so much, obviously. So it's really more of a nuanced conversation than that. Um, but, you know, if it were something where I knew that my kid had a, a gene for, for breast cancer and, and changing that gene would get rid of the, the, the chance of breast cancer or greatly reduce it, sure, why not? I think, that's, I think that makes good sense. Mm. I think the argument is, like, once you start going down, it doesn't matter, like, even if, if it's for curing a disease or just to make someone better than they already are, 
once you do one of those things, the other is going to come along right w w with it. Sure, right? slippery slope argument. I like get you that got, too. you know, like for all of you Star Trek fans out, out there, you know, like Khan, the genetic engineer, captain mm -hmm. of like the entire little ship, um, kind of stuff, stuff, stuff like that. Like you're, like when you start competition, like your parents start competition. <laughs> Like who's better? Who can you know? Who can uh, have a better, better hmm. grades and all that? Like better life, blah blah blah. I think what if do you I think, think it will inexorably lead to that? I mean, do you think if as soon as we start genetically engineering kids, it's going to be we make a super race of brilliant children and I think if there are no rules in, in implemented to stop that, it will eventually lead lead to that. I think, I think yeah. it will. Yeah, I agree. It would need some oversight. Yeah, for sure. Like I'll give you I'll give you an example. So I was I grew up in China, right? And uh, you know what cram, cram schools are? Mm -hmm. So like in addition to regular school, there's cram schools in which uh, you go go there just to um, do like do more work and learn about the current stuff you're learning in school. Mm -hmm. So it's like you're re rebuilding your like boot foundation, camp or kind school. of basically. So like uh, and the thing is, if one kid goes. Then every other kid has to go because they're gonna fall fall behind if they don't. Yeah. So that that's the that's the kind of conundrum. Like if you if one per, if one kid is genetically engineered to be better than everybody else, then everybody else is gonna eventually come along to that. Because right? you don't want you don't want to fall behind. It's true. It's true. You know. Uh, so there you go, Danny Machuka. The answer is yes. All right, so Tony, what do I do here now? Do I play... Queen Tech. Oh, wait. I think I play 95 here. So I'm trying to make this bishop be as bad as I can. So I want to remove the F3 knight. You know, because right now my E4 knight and my rook both attack the bishop. And if you noticed, well, before the knight was here, the bishop had no good squares. Ah, so he just retreats it. I agree. Mm, take it. Yeah, I've got... I hate to get rid of my e4 knight, though. That's such a beautiful square. Mm. Let's do like this. Play like a crazy person. So I've got knight c3 ideas at some point, maybe. Also, Why this knight and this rook of... attack f2. I should get rid of that bishop. I know. He's doing a good job of guarding everything. You ever do think about something like rook takes uh, at f2 and then try to try it? Yeah, maybe. So if I play knight takes, rook takes. Mm. Nothing good there. Would you take the, f, f, take the f3 knight instead? Knight takes, pawn takes. Yeah, again, I don't know that I'm getting a whole lot. Ah. ah, so what if I Let's play like? Let's see here. Uh, Batman be begins, wants to play. Um, dun -dun -dun. Knight of Amarok wants, that's the guy that I wanted to play, wanted to see you play the Nimzo. Oh, okay. Yeah, Knight of Amarok. Knight of Amarok. You're up next, Knight of Amarok. All right, and then there's Micah Perky, short for Michael Perkins. Okay. We'll get to you, we'll try to get to you. We'll try to get to you. No promises. Because you never know, there could be some more technical difficulties. Hey, 53 people watching now, yeah! It went from like almost 100, then we had to stop to zero, then we came back to 50 something. Love it. Let's see, you are down on time, you are uh, down in material. Who, me? Oh no, you're not, sorry. Knight and a knight, this is a rook and that's a bishop. Sorry, sorry. I probably didn't play this as precisely as I could have, but that's 40 okay. 40 seconds. I think I'm going to do okay with this. Is this 5-0, or is this a increment? Uh, I don't know what I'm playing. 5-0, so i got to play quick. Got it. All right, I'm going to pay attention. There you go. There you go. Boom. Yeah. I think it's pretty, pretty good. I think this is a... You can do it in 30, 30 seconds. It's a win for you. Yeah, for sure, because this bishop's yeah. going to hang, too. It's yeah. the problem. Yep, I want to keep it about two. Oh, he's in time no. trouble, too. Boom. Okay. No. Come on, Yamato. Come on, Yamato. No. Yeah. You're, you're down on time and material now. What are you going to do? 
should have played faster. Is this a uh, lag going on? Ooh, you no. need to check? Do the little check or whiskey? Well, I'm going to take that bishop with check right. next, yeah. I had to take the rook first, because if I play rook takes bishop, he has king f2. Uh, yeah, he's got to play like yeah. h3 or something, yeah. Uh, just win it. Uh, the stupid knight. Okay. If I played rook b1, he has knight c2. Right, he's still defending. Right. So I think the... Oh, I should have done that the move before, but maybe not. That's cool. You're up on time. Look at that. All right, Yamato. Hands. All Give right. me a hand. Good. Nice try. Nice try. Nice try. Thank you for the game. All right. Who's my opponent now? Knight of Amarok, if he's there. There he is. 5-5. Five, 5-5. Five. Five, right. five. What? Amarok. We talk about this. 5-0, man. Yeah. 5-5 five, is going to be kind of long, so I might resign if, if we we'll take forever. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll see uh, if we can play the Nimza Witch. Nimza so Knight C6 and D5, huh? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I actually don't remember what he said. Sure, we'll play it. Well, I guess I have to take pawns back, right? What's he going to do? Attack you? Probably knight c3, knight f3, c4. I'm going to be greedy, and I'm going to take this d4 pawn, maybe. Greed is good. Greed is good. It's one of the s sins that uh, will get you a lot in life. I just watched the movie 7 again. Uh, it was on TV the other day. I haven't seen it in years and years. Really good. Talk about sin. Whew. God, how old is that movie? It's got to be like... Uh, uh, 90s, maybe? Yeah, it's got a real, really old. Dun, dun, dun. Let's see here. Uh... Dank Siga, appreciate your viewership. Love it. Mm -hmm. Morally is better. I don't think we should be playing God. I feel like all sur surgeons play God. Really? I, it's because of like, all the mo movies out, out there about like surgeons being... But does your mechanic play God? I mean, he fixes your brakes so you don't crash and die. You know? you're, you're referring to fixing fixing an inanimate uh, object as opposed to like making somebody live again. So, uh, but I, I don't know. I, it's tricky. Sure, playing God maybe, yes. But the whole point is we're trying to take care of each other. So doctors uh, come into it with a mindset of, hey, let's make, um, let's make people healthy. Let's make the world a better place. It's not like they come into it with this you know, evil grin and the twisting of the mustache. Man, there are so many movies out, out there where it's just like, the plot is basically you're a sur surgeon. You have two people you can save, but you can only have time to save one. What do you do? Playing that's God like, right there. That's like the old trolley problem, right? You have five people. Uh, so there's train tracks that split. There are five people that are working on the tracks on one side and only one person working on the tracks on the other. You have the ability. Right now, the train's going to go and hit the five people and kill all of them. You have the ability to flip a switch, and you'll save those five people's lives but you'll be condemning the one person on the other side of the track still. Do you play God? Do you pull the, the switch and kill one? Your decision has led one person to die, but you've saved five. That, that, that's exactly my point. Like, you, you made the choice. You're, like, you're playing God. You made the choice for one person to die. Even though it's good for the better, the whole, well, like, you made that choice. All right, Sevens from 1995. Thank you very much, MSB. Appreciate the fact. Um, more... Mal Royce two two eight eight. Can we play? We'll try to get to you. No promises. Some people call me Mal Royce. Of course, science mostly is good. You can't pull the lever. You can't pull the lever. So you're when you say you can't pull the lever, Michael Perkins. Are you talking about like the situation with the train? Like you can save save five, but you have to kill one. In that case, I think uh, philosophically, you should right. Save save the majority. I don't know. But depend. Now let's like, make it. If I were the one that's gonna die, I would still. I mean, you. I would still do it. It's best. It's best for the majority. That's well, let's make a, it a little bit more nuanced, though. What if it was five strangers and the one person is your best friend or your mom? You know, I mean. Okay, touche, <laughs> touche. Why you gotta make it so hard? But really, I think at that point, though, the question is no longer, um, you know, what is the moral decision. The question is, how likely are you to make the the most moral decision compared to making the decision that benefits you the most. Mm, mm. It's tough. Touche. I, I, I think uh, if I had to save like uh, my, my sister as opposed to like 10 strangers, the, t the 10 strangers can basically die. 
That's 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 how my view is now. Oh shoot! Uh, I thought I had see. knight takes d4, bishop takes d4, castle queen side, <laughs> and I was going to win a bishop. But he's got bishop takes g7 at the end of all that. All right. Why are we at six sixteen twenty? Oh. That's, oh, no, because it's five five is a different time in, control, I guess. Rapid. Yeah. Dang it, Niner Amarok, you, you made us play a time where we're not 2,000 anymore. Haha, -ha. that's okay. We'll gain some rating points here too, hopefully. Both have bishop pairs, that's pretty good. He still have two 250 left? Wow. Yeah, yeah. Dude, your 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 knight on on G eight is not doing anything. Why don't you get that sucker out of there? Yeah, I was busy getting the rest of the suckers out of there. You know, come on, give me a break. All, all his all his minor pieces are active. Oh, I'm half a move behind. He, so he has to react to the fact that I'm hitting his bishop now, and so whenever he reacts to that, I can develop my piece and then again. Are you we're gonna try right the same. You're gonna try that trade that white square bishop off so you can get get that pawn. Yeah, maybe. Is that what the point yeah, if he plays like bishop e two. I can just take it and then I can play knight takes on c4. I'm gonna get castled queenside maybe too. It's interesting, Magnus uh, Carlson said something. You heard of that guy? Ooh. He's pretty good at chess. I, I think I heard of that name once or twice. You know? He said something about how um, if you're, what was it? If you're one move away from castling, you're fine. If you're two moves away from castling, it's questionable. And if you're three moves away from castling, you're much worse. You know, and, and I don't think that means like in every single position, but especially whenever you're developing tit for tat with your opponent. I develop a piece, you develop a piece. I get something out of the way, you get something out of the way. I think that's more what he's referring to, so. Um, okay. So we gotta move our bishop. Yep, do it, do it. Yeah, I want everything developed. I want to play knight f6 and rook uh, h to e8 all at the same time. And then there's got to be some kind of a discovered threat. You know, knight takes pawn or bishop takes pawn or maybe even like rook takes this knight at that point. I wonder if he's going to try to cast. I guess you can play bishop e, e2 and castle maybe. Sure, you can castle queen side. You can develop the bishop. He can play. He's not going to castle queen side. Let's face facts there. Why not? Horrible, horrible. Okay. Then you can just play. Oh, he did have to coin that. You know what, Niner Amarok, here we go. Here we go. We're, we're going to do a little uh, bishop takes uh, Bishop takes C, C3, get that double pawn in front of the king. You want to do that? Nah, I just. I don't know. I think I'm going to finish developing my pieces. Develop? Who's, yeah. Who heard of developing? I like keeping the both bishops, you know, the, the two bishops here. So even though these pawns would be weak, um, you know, I don't have a whole lot of stuff that can easily get over there to attack all those weak pawns. Mm. Especially with his king being over there, the king can defend the pawns. In fact, uh, going back to Magnus again, there were a couple of times where he's recently played a game like this where, you know, he gets a busted up queenside pawn structure, like pawns on a2, c3, that kind of thing, and he still castles queenside. It's, uh, ooh, it's something. Ooh. Man, you're, you're not on it. Uh, F3 is, F6 is not great. Okay. You're still going to do it. I knew it. All right. Double the pawns up. There we We're go. Doing it. The only Double reason is because I want to put up. a knight on C5. Because you're right. That knight on F6 wasn't doing a whole lot. I didn't want to give away D5 to his knight, so I traded his knight off first, and now I'm going to reroute this guy to C5. You know, one of the best squares for, for a minor piece like this or a knight. Oh, look at this guy. Cheeky. Okay. Cheeky move. Cheeky move. Let's see here. Uh, mm, dun, dun, yes, I'd rather, t <laughs> I'd rather save 10 strangers. <laughs> Utilitarian would argue that more people survive, the better. Kind of, yep. Okay, all right, we get the it. Utilitarian argument, yeah. We for get sure. it. Yep, yep. And it's Check by it. a person with the name Revenge. Okay, cool. Let's so I'm a little uh, worried about this night on A7. Because at some point I think I get to play c5, and then this knight's not defended anymore. Are you going to play c5 ne next move? Oh, you can't anymore. Okay. Ooh. So if I start with c6 and, and then, then c5? c5? Yeah. I think he's going to do a little uh, rook. 
Sakaruski. Rook, rook D D six maybe. So rook D six. Uh, I think you just drop your rook because I can play king C seven. You don't have bishop C five. Oh yeah, pawn C five. Ah, uh, that's cute. Rook D six, king C seven, pawn C five. Then I can come back king B eight because by playing C five, you've broken the communication between your bishop and your knight. Mm. That's cute. All right, we're gonna block it. Block it. Let's do it. Now's Sucker. The time. So I expect F4. Amarok, we just blocked you. And you only have 25 seconds, dude. You are just going down right now. Huh, okay. Yeah, I think pawn to F4 was a better try. This way, I think you're just dropping a piece. Well, you're doing good right now. Man, nine nine of Amarok, you're just getting checked everywhere. Always check it could be check, made, check, right? Check. Isn't that what they say? We want that piece. We want that piece. I think he has to play bishop d1. Ooh, that works too. King a3. King a3 and then, ooh. Might you just get get rid of that bishop? Bishop is annoying. Wait, does rook take bishop work and then knight take c4? No, nope. they're going a. I don't understand. Danny just. I thought it was an a. Danny. Uh. It was an a. Oh, because the bishop covers a4. Okay, so if we get the chance to do it again, uh, we will. Dan Danny Machuga just okay, pointed well. out a great mate. and uh, That's right. We still got the mate anyway. No, we still got it. We still did. Knight of Armorock, you're going down, man. Thanks for the game. I'm going to pre-give you the, one of these. Nice, nice try. Nice try. Good job. All right. We're going to play job. Mara. Who? Uh, Marwa? Who? Moroys? Oh, Moroy. Moroy. I have no idea. I don't know how you Sicilian. say Sicilian. Okay, here we go. Uh, dun, dun, dun. Sure. Uh, was as I learned to play chess, moving your knight to files like H and A was for forbidden. Okay, all right. Nowadays, I see a lot more puzzles where it counts as a good solution without any real explanation. Any thoughts on that? Say again. So when he learned, this gentleman learned how to play chess, uh, going putting a knight on the A or H file was for, was forbidden for him. But now he sees a lot of puzzles where, like, that's actually a solution to a puzzle. Yeah, so that's the thing about puzzles, right, is they're, uh, hold on, i got to, like, do something. Let me figure out where my pieces go for a second. Okay. This is only at the beginning. I know. I, I don't know any French theory, and somehow I got tricked into playing an advanced French here. Um, I mean, that's the whole point of puzzles, though, right, is that it's going to be something weird and quirky. You know, one of the things that I've been... Uh, uh, or what I've uh, witnessed people who are good at solving puzzles do is <clears throat> they'll say, um, you know, they'll look at the position overall. There'll be some complex of pieces doing something interesting, you know, tactically interacting with each other. Um, and then uh, there will be a random pawn, you know, a pawn on A2 that looks like it has nothing to do with anything. It's not part of the position. It doesn't really go. It doesn't make sense. Um, but that pawn it turns out will end up being, uh, you know, the interesting piece, the one that's important. It has some, some critical little thing where you get to the end of all of this tactical sequence and then you can play this pawn move. Um, so yeah, the people I, who I know that are better than me uh, at solving puzzles, that's one of the things they do is they say, look for that little weird thing about the position, the thing that doesn't make any sense, and mm -hmm. that's probably going to be the, the important factor. So we have a lot of, uh, there's a lot of grandmasters in the world that say, at a certain level, once you get to a certain level, the way you get better is just to be tactically better. Work on tactics, sure. purely, basically. And consistent. Do you, you know, agree that's, with that? Oh, absolutely. Okay. The important part there is being consistent, too. You have to be accurate every single move. No mistakes, no, like I almost played bishop b5 check, but it would allow knight c6, and then I just drop a piece. So you have to make sure that, um, like, not only do you find those really cool, dazzling, flashy moves whenever they come about, um, but that you consistently find good moves. Uh, what? What's wrong? What? 
<laughs> That's oh. what's wrong. Whoops. Okay, you caught me. I spend too much time chit chatting. Thank you for the game. All right, let's do it again. What do we got? We already uh, played. Vit. We already played Vit. My so Micah per per Perky's been, and then Batman B B Begins. Though those two has been on challenges for a while. Sure, we'll yeah. try Batman. Batman, you're on. Batman, I'm Batman, you're on. Oh, we played Batman a lot, dude. Look at this. We have a ten and a half, four and a half score. He's actually he's he challenges to like a, a, every time that we do this. All right. Uh, oh, PSG Soccer Rook says, "Play me, I will crush you." Probably. I'm weak, so. Yeah. PSG Soccer. We, I I remember you from um, previous sessions we've had. This. Are you are you the PS, PSG soccer fan from um, from France? Is that you? Well, we'll see. Yeah, well, uh, we'll push you on the list and see how you do. 2008 or 2003. Ooh, ooh. Basically the same rating. I want some points. Some points. Okay, so what am I supposed to do against this line? Win. Win. Oh, win. win. That's a good idea. Uh, you haven't played me yet. My username is talperry123. All right. We'll try to get to you. No promises. Who's that? Tal, uh, Tal Perry, one, two, three. All right, Tal Perry. We'll give it a shot. <laughs> uh, Tal Perry's like, if you don't want to lo lose too badly, then don't play me. Dang, huh. all this trash talk. Ha, all ha, this trash ha. talk. I don't know if the, I don't know if you're trying like reverse psychology to where mm -hmm. I actually wanted to play you then, but um, I'll show you how badly I can lose. <laughs> oh, do you want to accept a one one minute game one zero? I'll play one. Really? Okay. All right. One. I'm I'm terrible at bullets, so this one I probably will lose. But uh, Sh Shyan Shyan challenges one zero. See if we'll see if we actually take it or not. I feel like a lot of the challenges are either accepted or declined by the way we feel that second. It's true. So we'll we'll see if we actually get we actually feel playing you once we get to that point. It's true. Dun, 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 dun. Why would so can you guys name the famous players that have played the Banco Gambit? There's obviously Pal Banco, who it's named after, recently passed away. He's an American grandmaster. Um, you you're asking our viewers if they can if yeah, they can name yeah, it? Yeah. Who wow. else? Wow. Um, I'm gonna say like not many of you actually know. Danny, this is not for you. This is for our viewers. Danny is trying to Danny in the back trying to yell some a answers for us. So that was a hint. Magnus Carlson. That's one. Yes. There's another world champion I'm thinking of though too. Let's see if Danny can get this one. I don't think he can. No. Not not Mikel Tall. Uh, thanks for the live show, you guys. Thumbs up. Thumbs up to you, Lorena. Thumbs up to you. I'll give you a hint. It, this it was in. not the Gary Kasparov lineage of world champions. It was the FIDE world champions. It was during that, uh, during that phase from the, the 90s until uh, 2000 when they had the reunification match where Gary Kasparov was the classical world champion and then FIDE had a separate world championship cycle. And so like Kasparov, um, he ended up playing Kramnik in 2000 and that's what reunified the titles. Kramnik held the FIDE world championship title Kasparov held the classical world championship title, mm. and uh, and Kasparov, as, as we know, lost that match and retired from chess a few years later. But no, it's, it was one of those FIDE world champions in that interim period, who's uh, uh, a known Banco Gambit player. So we have some answers from an audience. Uh, tall, we already said not tall. Spassky, that's a little. Uh, Spassky is a little. Spassky was before Kasparov. Yeah, before I'm thinking of somebody old, more contemporary. Yeah. Um, Carlson sometimes. Yep, we said Carlson already. So there's one more person. Um, is he a Ru Russian player? Is that what you're talking about? Uh, Ukrainian. Ukrainian. Okay. Ukrainian GMs, guys, yell it out. Yell it out. I gotta move my queen somewhere. Um, so if we all give up, I will. I will give you the answer. Uh, he Topolov? actually. I'll give you one more. Uh, really close. Topolov's Bulgarian, though. I'll give one more hint. He played, uh, the person I'm thinking of played an exhibition match 
at the chess club. Uh, it was our first international event that we held at the club, and his opponent was uh, Hikaru Nakamura at the time. It's not Ivanchuk. Not Ivanchuk. What other Ukrainian players do you guys know? Um, Ukrainian, Ukrainian. Some guy just said don't know. Oh, Ko Korobov. Karabov's a great guess. He's a, a good player, too. But no, it was actually Ruslan Panamaryov. Ruslan Panamaryov. I was just go Googling this, man. Uh, just too Googling slow. This. So Panamaryov used to be, uh, yeah, I think he's still a 2,700 grandmaster, but he used to be way up there. I would say he was in the top, you know, 10, 15 in the world. Um, oh, I have a problem here. I'm going to move my bishop because it's attacked. Batman begins. Come but on. But then he's going to play f4. Oh, no, he's not. Okay. Okay. We're okay. We're okay. Let's just, everybody calm down. Apparently we're okay, but. Eh. Oh, he's I just. I don't want to talk about that move. He just forked you. Good job. Good job. Well, no, it's still complicated. I'm not sure that he's winning here. You know, for example, I'm, a t I'm threatening his rook, too, so let's I'm start just, with uh, that. I'm just giving him a prop props because, you know, all the shows we have that's called Nonsense. Don't Get Forked, and you got forked. Well, yeah, but I forked back. Well, not forked, really. Kind of. So I'm threatening bishop takes d4. I'm also threatening to remove the defender of this knight, and I'm also threatening to take this rook. So he took. So he took. I'm going to take back. Now, if I take here, he takes my rook, right? And then you take his rook. Is that the plan? Yeah. Seems fair. And if I play knight takes rook, I don't know what's happening. So. How do you take his bit bishop? I think we'll just take this guy. Yeah. This one looks important. Get rid of that bishop. That bishop was a monster. Uh, and Get I have an important that. resource, too. If he plays bishop f1, I had uh, queen takes knight. You so take he's going to take his rook, yeah. Okay. A peshki. All right. All right. Oh. He went pawn grabbing there. Yeah. So now do I take this bishop or do I try to save my knight? If I try to save my knight, he has bishop f1. <sighs> save the knight. Maybe. No. I think I'm going to oh, just try to win attacking. this. attacking. We're attacking. We're basically saying, screw you. We're attacking you. Uh, bronze team, let's see here. Yeah. Can I somehow share the screenshot of the puzzle I was talking about? I really like the explanation. OK, sure. Share it with us. Bronstein once said, we are living in an era that the beauty of a chess game is in the analysis and not in the played moves. In what era do you guys think we are living in now? <laughs> okay. Read it again. So Bronstein once said, we are living in an era that the beauty of chess game is in the analysis and not in the played moves. In what era do you guys think we are living in now? Oh, I mean, definitely computers right now. Um, it's the era of computers. It's... We're seeing um, not just players starting to play more like the computers, you know, either defending difficult positions or, or, or playing um, uh, positions that at first glance don't look so great, but the computer finds these hidden resources. Oh. Um, Batman Begins, that was cheeky. That was. That cheeky. was. Um, but yeah, it, I think that's really what it is. It's computers are teaching us how to play better, how to find hidden, you know, resources maybe that we wouldn't have found before. I think the the first real player. Um, oh, he's gonna do. A that's little, the one. And he's gonna block it. Yeah, and then I win the rook yep. instead. I love it. You just got tactic. Batman begins tactic. So is this a fork or a skewer or an X-ray? Or a pin. I don't know the words. I'm going to call that winning. All right. Thank you for the game, Batman. Much fun. Okay. Let's play this 1-0 game. Oh, PSG a, soccer. You are up. Against a 2,500. PSG soccer. He, he actually challenges it all the time, too. All right. Uh, Dan, I mean, Danny, is there a way this guy can share a screenshot with us? Do what? Like upload it somewhere and then post a link? Or email Tony Tanner? Uh, don't email. If you want to give us a screenshot, e email it to us, info at stlouischessclub.org. Danny was saying to email to my 
uh, to my email address. Let's not do that. Info at stainlessjusthealth.org. Uh, can I access info? At, yes, I, 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 I cannot, but I know people that can. So, I know a guy. I know a guy. For example, this guy sitting right next to me can. Um, I'm slow. Jonathan Schrantz, the club man manager, um, aka Dragon Slayer, he can do that as as well. So we will, we will probably ask him. Mr. Siperian said, "Good game." Daniel Roberger gave you a hand clap. Thank you, thank you. It was fun. PSG soccer room. Oh, is this? Was what? What time control was this? Bullet. Oh man, you're both. Yeah, she you're playing bullet, huh? Okay. Dang, dang. Oh no. Uh, okay. Just lost the piece. That's okay. That's alright. That's okay. Life happens, you know. Push him, baby. All right, everything's under control, right? And I expect knight c3. Well, basically, after you lost that piece, I was like, I'm not gonna watch anymore, he's gonna lose. Sorry if I don't have any confidence in you. That's just uh, life. Oh, I ran out of time. I'm so slow. I started thinking about the position again, man. <laughs> Three seconds, though. Uh, all right, maybe one or two more games, and then we gotta get out of here. One uh, or two more games. Who are we playing against? Here, I'll, I'll do a bullet game. One He's... more bullet, and then I'll play another real game, and then we'll wrap it up. Um, so are we're you, playing Vit. Are you, are you playing bullet because you lost that last game and you won? I'm on tilt. 1867. That's our bullet rating? Yep. It's higher than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be way lower. Because we generally don't, don't play bullet. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, so we're we're being Mike told Comer? that yeah. yeah, we're being told that Mike Comer is the only one that actually plays bullet. Nobody else actually does. So that's actually pretty. If that's all him, that's pretty impressive. I figure some young kids, you know, some teenagers like Nick Briscoe is like, I'll play bullet because I'm fast. Because young people live their life quarter mile at a time. That's what they do. <laughs> quarter mile at a time. Let's <laughs> I've been watching a lot of that. Fast and lately. furious, clearly. Uh, this guy looks like Eric Rosen's dad. Oh, look at that. I didn't know about that. That's cool. Okay. Okay. That's. Um, Make sure he does his homework. Yeah. I don't know what I just did. I spent like 30 seconds calculating a move in bullets, so that's just ridiculous. Oh. You got to just do nat natural moves, man. Natural moves. Be like Anish Giri. Just, yeah. Oh, so bad. It's, Find it. Find it. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, he's going to play there. I like it. Ooh. Come on. Down on, you're down on time, Vit. Down on time, Vit. Oops. It doesn't matter, you have five seconds. Go, go, go. Yeah. Pre-move, there you go. Winning on time. Winning on time. Yeah! Preemptive hand, Vit. Good, good try, good try. Oh! Good try. Just give it up, man. Good try. Oh, he what? Beat us. Are you kidding me? Uh, what is that? Oh, geez. good job. Good job, man. Good job Talking on that one. Wow, wow. All right. Sorry, stupid nicknames. Only rated games. Rated games only. Uh, uh, Bar Bartex? Sure, we'll Bartex. play this one. We'll play Bartex. One more. Right. One more. All right. Bartek. Where are you from, Bartek? Uh, Looks like he plays everything on Lee Chess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we, we, yeah, we, we see him all, all the time on the show, so he's a uh, regular. All right. I just started playing this two nights stuff in the 
Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna play this really bad line. It, it's terrible, don't ever play this for real. H6 is probably just winning. Um, but I started playing this in 3-0, um, mostly because it's really tricky. If they just play like E6 or something, um, you have a very early knight to E5. So you're just playing, playing for tricks, you're not really... Correct. Oh, okay. You heard it, Bartex, we're playing for tricks. Playing for tricks. Seventeen. But look, I got all my pieces developed except this four, stupid okay. guy and this stupid one. I mean, you usually when they just. Uh... Oh, okay. Never mind. I thought just. Gonna, I thought they were just gonna take your knight on h three. That's usually what they do, yeah. But they won't play bishop g four first typically. Yeah, get rid of that pin. Get rid of that pin. Would you do it? Would you cat? Plan that castle on queen side, push G. Oh, there we go. We pushed G4. Yeah, I think I'm going to go for it. And then we're going <laughs> to pawn, pawn storm you, Bartex. Pawn storm is coming. But first, get our own king to safety, right? Do you actually worry about king safety? I thought you were re reckless. Let's <laughs> go for it. Sometimes. What's interesting is if he plays a5, maybe I don't castle queenside because you know the mm -hmm. the nonsense coming. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, okay. Let's mix it okay. up. Okay, okay. Let's oh, give it the old, we're going back to our young younger days. Reckless. That's right. going to push push forward. Push forward. Yeah, I was a little too worried about the queen side. My bishop was going to come under fire. Um, yeah, and he was going to pawn push to you too, so. Right. Good choice. Good choice. Danny, when she'll get in the bag, is laughing at us because apparently we're not playing well. And then Isaac is following suit. He's also laughing at us. Yeah, but the difference is Danny's like, you know, a 2200 player, and Isaac, well, let's just say he's not. Dang! Dang! I quit. Me too. All right, can I get an f4, f5 somehow? Maybe we first, like... Ooh, we push, really? I want maybe to bring this bishop back or something at some point. I haven't decided exactly what's happening yet. Um, push that. Go ahead and push it. Go ahead and push it. Okay. Always mm -hmm. play f3. And then he's going to... And then he's, he's going to play bishop yeah. d5, and then I can play my bishop c2 idea. This uh, is probably good. It, you know, got my bishop on a I thought you were more put, attacking deck. I thought you were going to push that pawn. c4 yeah. and win the bishop? Yeah. Psh! Don't be crazy. We can still do it. <laughs> See, this is what I mean by you have to be consistent. You know, you have to find C4 every single time. Not like me where you find it the next move because somebody told you about it. <laughs> All right, Bartex, we're officially up on material. Let's see. I'm just defending my knight, that's all. I have no threats at all. Check, check. He's coming up here. Check. All right, so we start with check, I think. Checking. You're going to put, put your knight, knight And then I'm going to play... Knight d6? Oh, no, no. Oh, this okay. intermezzo. Oh, okay. And then knight d6. Okay, I got you. That looks good. That looks good. And the idea... Well, the idea is that if he plays queen e7, then I'm going to just mate him like this. But if he plays queen out, then maybe I take on g7 with something. Uh... Well, obviously the queen, right? Bishop takes. Well, if I play queen takes, king e7, then what? Then... Then I think I just have to play king up, right? Pos well, I mean, your bi bishop's protecting uh, g d3, so you don't need to worry about that. Is that what you're worried about? No, I'm more worried about these rooks. So, like, for example, if I play queen takes, and he plays king e7, and I play king g2, then he has rook g8, and my queen's trapped. But if I play it bishop chat, bishop takes, then the bishop helps cover some of these squares back here for me. So I think this is probably the better way to go. I thought you were going to leave your bishop on uh, e, e5 just so you can bring your knight to uh, d6. Oh, that would have been good too. But I think he has to yeah. just uh, sack yeah. the exchange there. This is pretty good though. Take all your pawns and then I'll worry about what happens. Okay. 
dun, dun, dun. You managed to win by point one second. Yes, you did. Great, <laughs> so great did. job. Great job. I, I thought you were. I thought you you were like down for every the longest of, time. Oh, I'm so stupid. Dude, what am I doing? that's why. That's why. Oh, uh, Bartek. Your bishop was there to protect that square. Can, do I resign or can I even play anything here? Let me think. One, two, three, six, three, four. It's gonna take. I think. You're gonna, yeah, you think you're done here. I okay. mean, you could you could put potentially knight like knight b six four because that doesn't really do anything though. Yeah, let's not resign though. Oh, am I just gonna get mated though? That's what's happening actually. I'm not even losing my queen. If I play king back, he has queen right. g three. If I play king back, right. he has queen h three. Okay. All right. Thank uh, you very much. Da, da, da. Stop, Rosarek. Good seeing you too. Good. And thank you for joining us. Five minutes. Uh, sack the bishop on f five. Okay, five minutes ago. Blah, blah, blah. Whatever. Sure. Is that it? Um, one more game? Okay, let's play one more. We can't one lose. More. Sorry, guys. No casual games. Only rated right now. You know better. Um, you know better. Let's see. We already played Stupid Nickname. We played... Did we play Master Tomato yet? We have not. All right. We'll play this guy. Hi, Master Tomato. Tomat. Ni 1999. We got to get one point. I'll offer a draw right now. Get that one point. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are probably too young to remember, but I think it was uh, Dan Quayle. I think it was Dan Quayle. He was vice president for... Uh, George Bush, the first one, uh, he uh, had a little campaign snafu or there was something where they were calling him an idiot because he didn't know how to spell tomato because he put an E on the end of it. And that, back then, that could ruin your political career if people thought you were dumb because you put an E on the end of the word tomato. Now you can do just about anything and still be a politician. Literally, just about anything. You're right. Uh, Barsoro Bar said, I'm from Poland. Good game. Thank you. Ah, yes, thanks. Um, let's see, sad mistake, yes, that was a sad mistake. How many hours of instruction are we doing in the classroom this, these days, like per week? Per week, uh, I want to say roughly around like 275. Yeah, 275 hours, hours, hours per week. Hours per week at, at uh, St. Louis schools, so. That's awesome. I know we've got a big, uh, a big team of instructors that go out. Um, you know, we typically look for people that have some kind of a background in education. Either they were classroom teachers or uh, have been a tutor or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so we look for folks like that and then bring them in. Um, a little bit of chess knowledge is required to begin with, but really we can work on that part. Correct. Uh, for all those of you who are actually, um, who actually know anything about scholastic chess, you know that majority of them, I would say like almost 90% are all beginner chess. So our goal is really just to spread chess as much as we can. Um, yep. Except your select chess program. Why don't you except for the select chess program, yes. Uh, our viewers actually know a lot about this. I've been talking about this almost every time. But So we gather some of the top top uh, rate, rated kids in St. Louis to, with the goal of getting them to a title, um, either hopefully GM, um, at the very least NMIM, all that stuff. So it's actually taught by Grandmaster um, we're originally a Kobe in who has who is living in St. Louis, and he he actually just finished his tournament in Isle Man. Um, I think he was his score. Where was his score? Like, I think it was like he scored six points, maybe five and a half, um, something sure. like that. I believe you. So he he did. Uh, he didn't. I think he was. I think he did pretty good. Um, he's coming back today. Actually, he'll be so. Uh, he'll be continuing with the select chess program tomorrow. Um, hopefully, at one point uh, in the future, we will have our kids up to a certain point where we can challenge other clubs, um, nationally, internationally, whatever it may be, and uh, try to get some collaboration from other organizations. So that'd be fun. Yeah, I agree. You know, one of the things that I've uh, I've had some conversations uh, about. I was talking to. Uh, uh, the lady who runs the Shanghai Chess Association or Chess Federation, Chess Club, something. Uh, and she said that they always look for fun uh, exhibition matches that they can do. Sometimes mm -hmm. amongst the adult players, but typically, you know, the kids. It's for, for the younger students. Um, and then so they'll have something where you play in, um, in your home country the first year, and then the second year you come back and you play in China. Uh, and it kind of rotates like that. So, you know, we, we had talked about doing something like that, but unfortunately, like you said at the time, most of our students were yeah. were just beginner players or scholastic rated kind of players. And the, the Chinese kids are really good at a really young age. You know, you'll have 18, 1900, 2000 rated kids. Um, uh, sorry. 
Yep, you're good. Correct. And that's uh, that's really because when you if you think about all the big good clubs out, out there, chess clubs out, out there, um, they're really known for producing high level kids, like Matt master level s students. Um, and we are just taking basically starting that process, and hopefully in a couple of years we'll get there. Um, I mean, we already have a couple of uh, 10, 10 year olds that are basically two, right, around 1900 to 2000. So I think in a couple of years we'll get to that spot. Um, we're really looking forward to it, actually. So that's mm -hmm. the goal. Um, Eric Rosen's dad. It makes me feel old. So. Uh, that's what I was exactly what I was thinking. I was like, he must feel old after being called uh, Eric Rosen's dad. That's all right. I probably am old enough to be Eric Rosen's dad. You are. Eric Rosen's like 20, what, 23? No, he's older than that. Uh, he's probably 30. At least. Is he? Okay. Yeah, so I'm, real, I'm not actually old enough to be, but it's not far off. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm up a pawn. We both have a pair of bishops. This is like the kind of position I'll play all day, every day. Um, I played the, as a little kid, I used to play the perk defense where you play d6 and g6 and bishop g7, castle king side. Um, and then when I got a little older, I started playing some Sicilians, um, mostly stuff like dragons, either a dragon or accelerated or hyper accelerated or something. So when you first learned the dragon, did you learn it because of the name? It was called the dragon? Because it sounded cool. No, uh, I feel like a lot of kids tell, tell me that. I'd be like, I started learning this because it's good because it's called Dragon. I was like, oh, okay. There's no <laughs> no rhy rhyme or reason just because it sounded cool. <laughs> kids, right? No, sorry, I'm calculating. Well, obviously you're gonna have to do uh, Rook Rook A8 to there. Rook A8, Bishop C5. I'm be scared. I'm be scared. Okay. And then he's gonna take this pawn. I bet he plays for C7. I bet he calls for it. Ah. Not so lucky. All right. Well, I guess we'll all defend our pawns. You don't want to trade trade pawns. Now, so my opponent's lower rated than me, and material's equal right now. So I'm going to try to keep as much material on the board as I can. Hopefully, he'll screw up or something. The only thing I really have going for me, I guess, at this point is... Um, really nothing, probably. Uh, no, the only thing I probably have going for me right now is that his kingside pawns and his e4 pawn, they're all kind of boop, 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 isolated. That's the sound they make. Boop, boop, boop. Master Tomato, I need a point. I need one more rating point. Master Tomato, Give you are to not me. 1447. You're definitely Give it to me. better than that. Are you you using an engine, Ma Master Tomato? Do yeah. we need to pull out an engine as well? Have an engine match? I doubt they're using an engine. All right, so rook a5, bishop b4, rook e5. Attacks a pawn, but that's about it. Mm, I think you're going to have to do uh, a... Rook A, C, C8. Just do I don't it. want to. Just do it. All right. I'm taking advice from Tony Chen now, guys. Now it's mistake number one. Right. Uh-oh. Spidios. All right, so we're going to defend this pawn a whole bunch, and then I'm going to be able to move my bishop somewhere. Don't say that. <laughs> Danny just said... Well, hold on. Yeah, doesn't oh. he have rook takes f6? Because this is pinned. Ugh. Way to pin, Master Tomato. Way to pin. Way to pin. Ah, uh, Tony Chen. Tactics every time. You're you're getting you're getting beat, man. I know. I want to have a rating over two thousand. I'm gonna have to just stay here. Offer a draw. <laughs> Game offer draw because you lose points for that. Okay, so. Uh, what do you know about Christian Carilla? Uh, Christian's a grandmaster, originally from Romania. He is, uh, he's recently been hired by the University of Missouri. He's their new chess coach. Um, and so he's recruiting uh, players of all skill levels uh, from around the world, really, and getting them to attend University of Missouri at Columbia. So Columbia is like an hour and a half away from St. Louis. It's the largest college in the, in the state. I think something like 30,000 students go to school there. Um, Is that true? Known for its journalism school. 
is it really the, the largest? Mm -hmm. I believe so. Is it the largest public? By student or pop no. Or just, oh, okay. I think the largest, largest. Okay, I'm going to win this game, luckily, but not because I deserve it. Sorry, Master Tomato, I'm going to flag you, but... Uh, what, what in life is really deserving? Yeah, good point. You're getting flagged, Master. Oh, and you dropped a piece. Yeah, it's hard. Thank you for the game. That was fun. We gained our one rating point, T-Chen. Yes, we're over 2,000 now. Woo! Oh, we gained zero. What is that? We're, where's our 1999? Come on. That's crap. Whatever. All right. So, All right. We, so we've got to play another one. Is Ooh, what no, no, no. Saying? Danny, are we, are we out of time? All right, let's do it. One more. One more. Wait, I want that 2,000. One point. One point. 1940. Well, you got to play against the 1941. Dang. That's all right. I'll play well. <laughs> Danny laughs at me. I said I'm going to play well, and then I play this opening. So uh, I'm from Ro Romania, too. Batman Begins, who you played earlier. Oh, nice. Played. We had a, a Romanian guy, Tabiru Goriescu, I think is how you say his name. Mm -hmm. Uh, he was one of our resident GMs. Uh, great guy. Super, super friendly. I think everybody liked him a lot. So I think we'll invite Tabiru back at some point to be a, a resident GM again. Um, one of our viewers asked, how did you train to get so strong? Uh, well, for me it was, um, you know, I started playing chess really before chess books and, and all of that jazz. Um, I'm sorry, before computers. So it was a lot of chess books. Um. Do you do you think books? Do you think ch yeah, chess books are like a dying thing now that like? Yeah, I don't know. I think computers. people still really like the the experience. Maybe it's just that old nostalgic sense of cracking the book and smelling. You know, they have a certain scent about them and sitting down over your board. It's it, of course it's much much easier to to. Um, you know, study with a computer where you can click through variations and go back to a position without uh, remembering exactly what it was. Um, uh, well, it looks like our fellow, our resident teenager is on the chat as well, Nicholas Risco. Nick Risco. What's up, buddy? Um, for all those who don't remember who he is, he is an uh, employee of the St. Louis Chess Club. He actually plays the people a couple times now. Um, He's, he has his own studio series, which I didn't know because I never watched it. <laughs> so Danny was just saying he's the editor and he doesn't even remember what the name of it is anymore. <laughs> you know, I think it's because we have so many gosh darn uh, lectures and, and shows and things that we upload to YouTube. Um, you know, we're really lucky to have all of the talented players in St. Louis that we do. Yeah, so episode two right now is is in processing. Mm. This is one of those positions where everybody's developed all of their stuff, you know, efficiently, and now you got to find a plan. All right, let me pull up Stockfish real quick. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Pull up Stockfish. Okay, so I think I want his light squared bishop, but he might play knight takes e4. Let's see. I'm just now starting to look at this game, so I have no idea what's going on. Let me see here. Um, I just heard a scoff from back the back room. How dare you scoff at me? Did you bite your thumb at me? The audacity. I will lock... Isaac's yell yelling at me for some reason. I don't understand what I did to him. I don't know where my pieces go. Yeah. Just make a move. Romeo and Juliet. And bite my thumb at thee. I challenged you guys again. I had to go and now I'm back. Welcome back. Um, this is probably our last game, so I don't know if we'll actually get to you, but join us tomorrow, 3 p.m. Uh, oh, that's right. So it will be our resident grandmaster in residence. That's going to be, uh, sorry, that's going to be playing the people. And right now, that's Grandmaster Jesse Cry. 
Yeah. If you guys um, haven't met Jesse, he's awesome. He's a really cool dude. I actually, uh, I actually talked to him before we started the show. He was going out for for a run, and uh, really nice guy, really chill. Um, it's one of those like, uh, he's one of those grandmasters that like are not. How should I say? What's the good word of saying that? Not like. He's normal. <laughs> yeah, not 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 pompous, not uh, you yeah. know, all that stuff. But he's yeah, down normal, to earth. He normal guy. Right. One of the things I like most about Jesse is he has a very clear way of explaining things. You know, he has a a, a style that is, I don't know, seems to jive with my my desire, how I learn. Uh, yeah, reroute that night. Yeah. Reroute that night. I'm going to. I think it's going to go to C5, and then E6, hopefully. Haha. <laughs> All right, we got to play fast now. Uh oh. Yep. Yep. Dun dun dun. Come on, come on, man. You're going. Yep, play fast. Play fast. Do okay. it. Deal. Push that guy back. I can't. H3 hangs. Ooh, okay, okay. You gotta win on time. You gotta win on time. <laughs> ah. It's okay, it's okay. Nobody freak out. We're doing fine. We're still drawing, hopefully. Pre move, yeah, pre move all the time. <laughs> Oops. Dude, he has so much more time. I don't get it. It's all ridiculous. Right. All right. All Dang right. Dang it. Thank Dang you for it. the game. Thank Give you. me a hand. Good job. Good job. Mm. Good game. Good game. Good all game. right, everyone. Thanks a lot. I had a great time playing you. Um, you know, obviously, it's much harder to do when you're talking to people. Um, but don't forget that we always play the people here at the St. Louis Chess Club. Uh, you can challenge us, tune in, watch our stream, um, you know, give us shouts of encouragement or heckle whenever you play like I do. So. All right, join us tomorrow, 3 p.m. Play uh, GM Jesse Cry plays against the people. Thanks. We'll see you then. This has been a presentation of the St. Louis Chess Club.